Welcome back, I'm Lizzie Pierce here with Adobe Stock and Epidemic Sound sharing 10 video and audio hacks you should know. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're a video editor. And if you're a video editor, there's a very good chance you spend a lot of time in Premiere Pro. These hacks will really speed up your workflow and overall make your life easier. Tip number one, keyframes for audio. When you're making videos that cut between talking and B-roll, you're gonna wanna use this tip. First, I'm going to pull up a soundtrack. You can now access Epidemic Sound through Adobe Stock Audio, which is integrated right inside Premiere Pro. To do this, find Adobe Stock Audio under Audio and access the Epidemic Sound Music Library. To do that, click Audio and then find your Epidemic Sound. If you need to license it, you can do that directly through here, or if you don't, you can just drag it into the timeline. Add keyframes by selecting the pen tool or pressing P on your keyboard. Then click to create points on your soundtrack that you want to lower or raise the audio. I'm going to lower it during my talking bits and bring it back up for B-roll. You always wanna make sure that your audio isn't peaking, but you also wanna make sure that your audio isn't too low either. So to do that, you can check your audio meter here. And again, you can use keyframes to adjust your audio so even when you're yelling or whispering, your audio is always level. Tip number two, collect favorite effects. Often editors have their own library of effects that they prefer to use. Often these effects define that editor's particular style. So if you wanna make your life a lot easier, make a favorites folder to keep all those effects in. This will save you time, searching, and sorting. Number three, changing the playback resolution. Not all of us have the luxury of working on a computer that plays back 4K footage without a stutter. So if your computer is lagging, try turning down the playback resolution. All you have to do is click this box right here and you can choose from half or a quarter of the resolution. This doesn't change the actual quality of your video. All it does is allow the program to play back previews without using full resolution. Number four is use proxies. If you want another way to speed up playback when working with high res files, use proxies. Now, what is a proxy, you might ask? Well, a proxy is a low resolution file that holds the place of your original high resolution file. It sounds complicated, but I promise it's not. Here's how it works. Right click on the clip from the project bin and click proxy. Then create proxies and choose a file format and location to save the proxies. Now Adobe Media Encoder will be launched to render your files into easy to edit proxy files. Then you need to add a button in order to turn the proxies on and off. So under the video preview, you'll see the program monitor toolbar button. Click the button editor and drag the toggle proxies button on the toolbar and then quit the button editor. From now on, you'll see that proxy button turn blue when you press it, and then by repressing it, you can use the original media. Number five is use shortcuts, and shortcuts are also known as lifesavers. So I like to customize my keyboard so that my most frequently used buttons are exactly where my hands rest. To do this, click Premiere Pro, then keyboard shortcuts, and change them around to fit your liking. Some of my favorites are M for marker, C for razor, and add edit is my favorite, so I customized it to S. Editing with keyboard taps as opposed to mouse clicks will shorten your turnaround time immensely. Number six is use voiceovers and record directly into your timeline using an external microphone. You heard that right, directly into the timeline. That means you can make sure your audio lines up perfectly with the footage you'd like to use over it and it saves you time uploading and importing. We all know I'm a sucker for a good voiceover and that's why I love this hack so much. Number seven is audio transitions. Audio is just as important as the visuals when it comes to a viewing experience. Choppy audio is the worst. It can really disrupt the flow of a video. That's why it's extremely important to use audio transitions and my personal favorite is fade in and fade out. This can be done very simply by right clicking on the end of a clip and selecting apply default transitions. Number eight is adjustment layers. Think of adjustment layers as a safety net for your work. They're useful for adding effects and color grading to a bunch of clips at once, and even more useful when it comes to removing them. To add an adjustment layer, first make sure you're selected on the project window. Then head up into your menu and click add adjustment layer. Then it will appear in your project window and as you drag it onto the timeline, it looks like a video clip in itself, which it is, it's a blank video clip. 
I like to use adjustment layers for color edits, one for color correction and one for color grading. The great thing about adjustment layers is that you can drag it across all your clips and add all the same effects to them. This beats having to copy paste attributes over and over again. The reason I say it's a safety net is because if you change your mind or want to adjust an effect, you only need to adjust that adjustment layer. You don't need to go in and adjust every single clip. Number nine is markers. You make them with one click on a keyboard and it saves you a ton of time scrubbing. I like to use markers to mark my audio. I listen to the beat of a song and put a marker in for every beat that I think there should be a cut. And this makes the footage and audio look cohesive. Once again, I like to use one of my favorite shortcuts, M, to simply add in a marker. Number 10 is edit while you export using Adobe Media Encoder. Are you waiting for a project to export so you can work on your next project? Not fun. But you don't have to export directly from Premiere Pro. You can use Media Encoder to export your project so that Premiere Pro is free for you to use to edit that next project. To do this, all you have to do is go up to File, Export, and Media. Choose your settings for the export, and instead of selecting Export, we're going to press Q. This will automatically launch Media Encoder. Once the files load up in Media Encoder, just press the green play button up here and it'll start to export. And yes, you can still work on other project files in Premiere Pro while this is happening in the background. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos on the Creators Lab series.